We're going on page 47 when we're done. So our related rates, nah, let me do something that was on here and it's not. Oh, dang it. Um, so we're going to look at at least two changing quantities. And most of the time they are, when we're talking rates, we're usually talking about things that deal with time, right? Miles per hour, people per minute, whatever, right? Um, and so we're going to take these sentences and it says to translate them into proper calculus notation to identify information in the given problem. All right, so if y1, it says the area of the circle, so we're talking area, is increasing at a rate of six square inches per minute. Okay, so we're not solving anything, we're just basically translating this into math, okay? So we know area, that's just capital A, right? But we're not, this isn't saying the area is six square inches, it says it, it is increasing at a rate, so we're talking about a rate. If I want the rate of something, I take the derivative, right? So the derivative that it is, the derivative is the rate at which, it's, at which it's changing, and this is inches per minute, so it's related to time. So that capital A would be area, right? Whoops, that's capital A. So that means the derivative of the area with respect to time, so dA dt, just like dy dx is the, the derivative with respect to x, right? So dA dt is equal to, six oops, inches per minute. That's just translating it into math. Oh, six square inches, sorry. I didn't left off the word square. Square inches per minute, because area is in square inches, right? We got okay with that? Volume, what letter do we use for volume? V, okay. The volume of a cone is decreasing at a rate, so that means I want the derivative of volume, two cubic feet per second, and that's with relation to time. So that's dv dt. Is that equal to? Decreasing at a rate of two cubic feet, so it's negative two, and then cubic feet per second. Everybody okay with that? Yes? All right. Then we have a water level in a fish tank is decreasing, so water level decreasing at a rate of two inches per hour. Okay, so usually when we talk about water, we talk about it in terms of what? what type of measurements, volume, okay? But look at our units. This is two inches per hour. So if it was volume, would it be inches per hour? It would be cubic inches, right? But we are talking about water in a tank, so let's think about what that looks like. So let's just see if I can we'll pretend like it is a rectangular tank. Okay, it's the best I can do. That's a really skinny tank, so this is probably not going to look very good. But... <laughs> Let me try a little fatter tank. That might be better. Okay. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to draw what I was trying to draw. Okay. So there's my tank. Okay. That'll work. And then whatever. And then I have the water inside of there. So the water is like this, right? Okay. So there's my water level. If we're talking about the water level, how do you measure the water level? What would this be, actually? The height, be more than the height. Um, so the water level is decreasing. So the water level we'll use as height. And so this is dH dt is equal to two, oh, it's decreasing, negative, negative two inches per hour. And you see how the height, bless you, the height here is in inches, bless you. The time is in hours. So we know it's also not the area, right? Because if it's area, that'd be inches squared, something like that. Okay, we okay with that? All right. Where are you supposed to be? Just go away, that's all. Just go away and go bother somebody else. All right, so then we're gonna learn, we're, let's talk about implicit differentiation. Okay, that means when we have more than one variable, 
right? And with x and y, we have more than one variable, but it's not necessarily solved for the variable that we want to take the derivative with respect to. So let's, let's take a little step back here. You don't have to write this down necessarily, but if I had y equals, um, I don't know, 2x squared. So when we take the derivative of y with respect to x, that's dy dx, right? And then that's equal to, so I'm going to do 2 times 2, that's 4x. And then technically, we have dx dx because I'm taking the derivative of x with respect to x, right? We just don't write that because that's 1, so we like never write that. You with me on that? So we really only have the dy dx. Well, and that's when we were taking it with respect to a variable that actually shows up in here. Okay, if I am going, if I wanted to take the derivative, so if I have this saying y equals 2x squared, and instead of saying, because what I did here is I, I took the derivative with respect to x, okay? I'm going to take this, I'm going to take the derivative of the same function, but this time I'm going to take the derivative with respect to time, okay? So I can do that. I can do, I, make, I can make that any variable I want to. Here, because this became dy over dx, I had to keep it. This was dx over dx. That's why we just never wrote it from the very beginning. Okay, you with me on that? So here, when I do this, this would be dy dt equals 4x dx dt. And I have to write it because now there's a t in the bottom and not an x. You with me on that? So we're going to be doing implicit differentiation with respect to time because these are rates. And you're using a variable that's not actually in the function, okay, to get our inches per minute or whatever, rate, that kind of rate. You with me on that? Okay. Because if we look here, it'll all come together. A little side note there. So it says um, we're going to do all these. The, the dy dx is still implicit differentiation. All of our derivative rules are the same. But we are going to do all of these with respect to t. And notice none of these actually have a t in them, all right, because we're talking about circumference here, area there. And then when we do that, we want to know how they're changing with respect to time. We could see how, how is the circumference changing, um, you know, related to the radius, but that's not what related rates are. So we're going to take this, and we're going to take this derivative. We're going to do the whole thing. It's d dt. Okay? Everybody okay with that? So then I just say, all right, what is the derivative of c? Yes, but it's, it's one, it's just one, right? One, and then it is dc, capital C, dt, equals, then the derivative of 2 pi r, that 2 and the pi, those are just constants, right? So if that was just like 2 pi x, I just have 2 pi. So this is 2 pi, oops, sorry. This is 2 pi, but then I would put d what? r dt. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Right now, just taking these random derivatives so that we have this. Everybody okay with all that so far? Okay. So then we're going to do the same thing here. The derivative with respect to time. So the derivative of capital A is just 1, and it's 1 dA dt equals... What's the derivative of pi r squared? 2 pi r, and then what do we have to put on it? dr dt. And I can't, I think we all understand that I can't multiply those two r's together or anything like they're not related to each other like that. Yeah. Don't treat it like just a plain old little r. We all okay with that? All right. So then let's take the derivative of volume with respect to time. This is the formula for the volume of a what? Can you take the volume of a circle, a sphere? Good. Yes, okay. All right, so dvdt equals, what's three times four thirds? Four, that's nice. Four times pi r what? Squared. And then what do I put? dr. Okay, so let's take a little 
just a little gander at what we have here for a minute. This is the volume of a sphere. You know what this is? It's the surface area of a sphere. This is the area of a circle. What is this? The circumference of the circle. Okay. It's the way that they're, they're related to each other. Okay. They're derivatives of each other. Okay. Um, all right. So then let's look at this one. So I'm going to take the derivative. And what is this thing called? Pythagorean theorem. Yes. You've been doing Pythagorean theorem forever. You should be like, Experts at that, right? Well, so what's the derivative of a squared? 2a, so I get 2a dA dt plus 2b dB dt equals 2c dC dt. So before, when we were just doing x and y, said, okay, we make sure if we had like three terms with y in them, we should have three dy dx's in our, in our, our next step, right? Well, if I have three different variables, then I should have three different little dt fractions going on, okay? And I can't combine those because they're not all exactly the same, right? We'll see what we're going to do with them in a minute, but everybody okay so far? All right. So now let's look at this area. What is this the area of? Rectangle, good. I know I'm asking all the really hard questions today. <laughs> all right. Length times width or base times height, right? So the derivative of A is just 1. So this is DA, capital A, that matters, DT equals. Now, when I take the derivative of length times width, what rule am I going to have to use? Product rule. So I take the derivative of the first. The derivative of length is just 1, but it's DL dt. My suggestion is make it like a lowercase l so that it doesn't look like a 1 so you don't confuse yourself. That's one reason why base times that's a little bit better. But the derivative of first times the second plus l times the derivative of the second, which is dw dt. Okay. What questions you got? We good? Now, on this last one here, we have a couple of options on what we could do with this one-third pi, because it is a constant, and we can put it out front with parentheses. I'm always afraid that we're not always going to use our parentheses correctly. So another option that we have sorry, is just to go ahead and I personally, just because I think it makes everything a little bit easier, this one-third pi, which is just a constant, I'm just going to stick it to the r, right? And then you just have all that times r squared and then times h. And if you do that, then you can eliminate some parentheses and things. But basically, I could put, so I'm going to erase this, so don't do this, but I could put one-third pi and then put parentheses and then just do the product rule with that. That works too, but if you lose your parentheses somewhere or you get confused with them, bad things happen. So I feel like what I've seen the most success with and people not doing weird things or remembering is just kind of connecting it all together. So that what I have really here is um, one-third r squared times h, right? And just put it all together like that. We okay with that? That's the way I'm going to do this. All right, so I take the derivative of v, so that's dv dt. That's equal to, okay. So the derivative of the first, that means I'm going to do 2 times 1 third pi. So that gives me 2 thirds pi times r. What do I have to do? Put it on that. dr dt. Okay. So that's the derivative of the first times the second, right? Plus the first, which is 1 third pi r squared times the derivative of the second, which, what would I write for that? dh dt. And then we could clean that up or do whatever it is that we're going to do with that, but it just, but we just got to make sure we understand how to handle those different things. Are we okay with all that? Even though it looks weird, we are, we're going to, we understand what to do. Yes? Any questions? All righty. Flip it over. Okay, 
So I'm going to just kind of talk you through this. Just kind of some extra information that, that might be helpful here. So in math, yeah, two variables are related. If one affects the other, we see this with various formulas, including the ones we worked on earlier. Consider, consider the circle at the right with radius r. We know that the radius of the circle is related to the area, right? No, not forever. When r changes, we know that the area of the circle also changes. The area and the radius of the circle are related by this equation, okay? So when r, increase, when r increase, increases, so does the area, but how quickly does that area increase as r increases? Because they don't, they don't increase at the same rate. That's why these are called related rates. They're related to each other, but the rates aren't the same, right? As one thing changes, the other thing doesn't necessarily change at the exact same rate. That's why they're called related rates, because they are related. So just as two values can be related through equations, the derivatives of those values are also related. Finding out the rates are related requires differentiation to a given variable, often time. Most of, most of the time, it's time. So here are your general steps that we're going to go through. Draw a picture of the situation if possible. Sometimes the picture really helps, sometimes it doesn't, but labeling everything can be helpful there and anything that might be important. Create a table of information, considering each variable as well as the rate of change. Identify the piece of data you're trying to solve for. So we're sort of going to create a table, but we're not really going to like draw boxes to make it look like a table, but it's still the same concept. Consider which equation, equation would allow you to find the desired piece of information. Take the derivative of both sides of your equation. Always make sure you're doing both sides. Remember you are using implicit differentiation, and then we substitute and go from there. So there's your little, I mean, I'm going to walk you through it, but if you need to go back and look at steps, there we go. Okay. So a pebble is dropped into a calm pond. I just picture that. If I just drop it, then you get those concentric circles, right? Uh, causing ripples in the shape of concentric circles. The radius of the outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate of one foot per second when the radius is four feet. Find the rate. Okay, so the radius of the outer ripple, outer ripple is increasing, that's important, at a constant rate of one foot per second. When the radius is four feet, find the rate at which the area of the disturbed water is changing, okay? So we're gonna write down a whole bunch of things before we actually start doing any math here. We are gonna first write down what we're looking for. We are looking for the rate at which the area is changing. So I'm not looking for the area, I'm looking for the rate at which it's changing. So the rate at which it is changing is going to be dA dt. And I'm going to put a question mark because that's what we're looking for. Okay, but then let's think about what our, we're going to go ahead and put units on here. So we're using feet and seconds. So area would be feet squared. Time would be seconds, okay? Feet squared per second. This, what is relate part of what is related to this derivative is the area itself so area is equal to and we're going to find that we're just going to put a little question mark again feet squared that would be our units okay these are just a couple of things that we're going to look for because if it's area it's unit squared so this is the the units for area over the units for time okay that's a good question anything else we good all right, so th that's what we're looking for, and we don't. maybe we have to find the area, maybe we don't, but we're just going to put that there. Then let's look at what we have. We have the radius of the outer ripple is increasing. So we have the rate at which the radius is changing, right? So we have dr dt, it gives it to us. dr dt, what is dr dt? It is the derivative of the radius. And look, the radius of the outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate of one foot per second. So dr dt is one foot per second. It gave it to me. It's possible that it's changing and it's some sort of equation, but in this case, it's a constant rate. It's not going to change. So the radius is changing at a constant rate. That rate doesn't change where the area rate does change. And then, so related to... This derivative is the radius. Do we know the radius for what we're looking for right now? Four. The radius, when the radius is four feet, so we're looking for four feet there. Okay. 
Everybody good so far? The units for radius should match the units on top here. The units for area should match the units on top here. That's how we know how to set all that stuff up. Okay. So what I need is I need the derivative of area. Okay. I know what the area formula is. These are circles. What is the area formula for a circle? Pi r squared, that is something you are expected to know. Volume formulas, other formulas that you may have to use, they will give you. They're not giving you the area of a circle. You've got to know that. Okay. So then I'm going to take the derivative with respect to time because all of this stuff is the derivative with respect to time. So d dt. So can you take that derivative without looking at the other side of the paper? Okay, take that derivative. Write down what you think it is without looking at the other side of the paper, then we'll see if our answers compare. Okay. So dA dt is equal to 2 pi r dr dt. Do we agree with that? Okay. So I knew to find that derivative because that's what I'm actually looking for, right? I'm looking for at what rate is the area changing. That's what rate it changes all the time. But it asked me, what is the rate in which it changes when the radius is four feet? Well, when the radius is four feet, the radius is changing at this rate, but it's always changing at this rate, right? And so the things I need in order to find dA dt Okay, so if I'm going to substitute stuff in, dA dt is equal to 2 pi, those are just constants, right? What, what do I use for r? 4, because I want to know what's happening when, it's, when the radius is 4. So 4 goes here. Do you know what dr dt is? 1. dr dt is 1 foot per second. So that gives me... Eight. So your answer then is dA dt equals 8 pi, what are my units? Feet, feet squared per second. And see, we wrote it down right there, so we don't have to go back and overthink it or whatever. We're just putting it in there, feet squared per second. That's my answer. Everybody okay with that? On these, it's super important that you read through it, kind of underline some stuff, make sure you're paying attention to units. I mean, you got to read them a couple times. There's a lot of information with lots of numbers and stuff. Go back, we write down what we're looking for, the rate and the actual thing itself, whatever they are, and then what we actually know, and then we go from there. Did I need to actually find the area? I did not, but sometimes I do, and if I already have it written down and I have the... Um, the units there, then I'm good to go from that, okay? What questions do you have? Okay, so let's read through the next one. The volume of the sphere, so volume of a sphere is increasing at a constant rate, 4,500 cubic inches per minute at the instant when the radius is 15 inches. What is the rate of change of the radius? And then they give you the volume of the sphere formula. So again, that formula, that would be given to you even on the AP exam. Circumference and area, not happening, okay? Volume formulas, those, those would be given to you. So the first thing we want to write down is what we're looking for. What are we looking for? The rate of change of the radius. So what do I actually write then? DRDT, good, because I'm not going to write out those words, right? So DRDT equals, and then I'm just going to put a question mark because I'm not necessarily going to fill in the blank here. So what would the units be on that? What kind of units would radius get? Because we're talking, the volume is, we've got cubic inches per minute, right? Radius is not in cubic inches. Is it in square inches? Can you measure the radius with a ruler? Yeah? So what kind of units is that? 
inches. You ever seen a ruler that said inches squared on it? No, because you have to have two dimensions, right? So based on what they're given in here, then I know that this is just inches per minute, and I'm going to go ahead and get that right so I don't have to think about it at the end because my brain might hurt at the end, okay? And then radius, that's related to that, equals. So let's see if they, they did say at the instant when the radius of the sphere is 15 inches. So the radius for this question is 15 inches. The radius isn't always 15 inches, but what, from what we're trying to find, that's what it is. We good on that? Okay. So then let's see, what else do we know? The volume of the sphere is increasing at a constant rate of 4,500 cubic inches per minute. So what do I write down? They gave me a rate, right? So I'm going to do a something, d something, dt. What is changing? The volume, so this is dv dt. And it says the volume of the sphere is increasing, so I know it's positive, at a constant rate of 4,500 cubic inches per minute. So inches cubed per minute. Okay, everybody okay with that so far? All right, so then also, if I just had the volume, that would be something that we don't know, and that would be inches cubed. Okay. Sometimes we write down a little bit more than what we actually need, but that's okay. It's better than not having enough. All right. So what I have, they gave me the equation for a reason. I have that the dvdt is 4,500, but I don't have a dvdt. I need to be able to substitute that in there somewhere. So I have this volume, so I'm going to write that down over here. So volume is equal to four-thirds pi r cubed. And then I'm going to take the derivative of that with respect to what? D, D, what? T. And I know that because they gave me, you know, with respect to time. That's where it was coming from. Everybody with me so far? All right, so take this derivative without flipping the paper over. Everybody with me? All right. So now let's see if we have all of our information. Before we even knew what information we have, we wrote a bunch of stuff down. Do you know what dvdt is? Mm -hmm. What is it? 4,500, right? 4,500. And then you double check that it wasn't 4,500 pi, because that could be a possibility, right? And it's not, so we can just leave it like that. That equals 4 pi. Can I substitute in R? Yes, that is 15 squared. And then do I know dr dt? No, that's actually what I'm looking for, right? Everybody okay with all that so far? Yes? All right. And what am I looking for? dr dt. All of this stuff here is being multiplied together, right? So can I just divide everything by this right here? So I can divide, I can say that dr dt is equal to 4,500 divided by 4 pi times 15 squared. Now, do you know what 15 squared is? You should. It's 225. Are you capable, even if you don't know, are you capable of finding it? Yes. Are you capable of multiplying by 4? Yes. Would you be capable of uh, reducing that fraction? Yes. Do you have to do any of that? No, so don't, okay? Because this is your safe stop, but what are we missing? Units, and my DRDT units are right here. I don't have to overthink it. I thought about it at the beginning when my brain was fresh, right? And this is just inches per minute. My answer. Okay? What questions do you have? Is that a lot of writing? 
Yes. Are you able to pull all that stuff out of the question okay? Not too bad, right? Now, I think that the volume of a sphere, I don't know that me drawing the sphere would have helped us any. This one right here, um, pebble dropped, I mean, unless you're just trying to understand what concentric circles look like, I don't know that us doing that would necessarily help us any. But on the next one that we're going to do, because I'm going to give you another sheet of paper, we should be able to get the next one at least started. But I think the picture definitely is going to help us. So yes, here we go. Okay, this is going to go on the same page. We'll just put all these on the same page, and I think that would be best, probably. Not that I remember what page it was, because that was 47. It's one on page 47. All righty. So the top of a 25-foot ladder, so we've got a 25-foot ladder, is sliding down a vertical wall at a constant rate of 3 feet per minute. When the top of the ladder is seven feet from the ground, what is the rate of change of the distance between the bottom of the ladder and the wall? Okay, so here's, here's what this is asking. Let's, let's just go ahead and draw a little picture here. So we've got the wall, we've got the floor, and then we've got this ladder here, right? We'll make that kind of look like a ladder. So. You ever had anything that was like propped up against the wall and it starts sliding down the wall so you go to grab it, and it seems like right before you grab it, it just speeds up and hits the floor. That's because it does speed up and hit the floor. Okay, if I'm pulling the, there's a, um, when I taught pre AP geometry for a bazillion years, there was a question we did when we were talking about triangles, and it was basically an AP type of question. It had to do with related rates, even though we weren't really talking about it. But we were pulling the ladder away at a constant rate, and then figuring out what this rate is. And if I'm pulling it away at a constant rate, this rate right here that's coming down the wall is actually increasing. So it's not your imagination. It really is speeding up before it hits the floor, most likely. Um, now, I don't even remember if that's exactly what this is asking, but we have, our, we have our picture, so let's label what we've got here. This is a, or let's, we have a triangle, a right triangle. We're going to use Pythagorean theorem. We're going to use letters here. We'll use A, B, and C. Okay? Those are the lengths of the sides. Now, are the lengths of the side, is le the length of side A, is it changing as the ladder slides down the wall? Yeah, because if it's sliding down, then whatever this distance is right here, that's going to change, right? And as it's sliding away, B is also changing and we're going this direction, yes? Does C change? No, okay. So C does not change. What is C? It's the length of the ladder and it is a 25 foot ladder. Sometimes that is the hardest part of the whole question is recognizing that, first of all, that's not changing. Can the heights of ladders change? Yes, but that's not what's happening here. It's a 25-foot ladder that is sliding down the wall. So this that we called C is really just 25 feet. Okay. You with me on that? All right. So let's continue to, or let's write some stuff down here. I want, the, I want the rate of change of the distance between the bottom of the ladder and the wall. So what I'm looking for is this rate of change right here. I'm looking for dB dt. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. What would the units on dB dt be, do you think? What's the, what are the units on B? Feet, this would be feet per what? Per minute, because I'm getting that from the question. Good, so this is feet per minute. And then the length of B, we don't know what that is. We might need it, we might not, but that would be in feet. Okay. So then the other parts of this, we have, when the t it says when the top of the ladder is seven feet from the ground. So basically when A is seven. So this is the top of the ladder. When it's from the ground, it's when A is seven. Now, could we have made this A and this B? Yes. And then we would flip things around. It would be totally fine. So I need also DA DT. I don't know what the rate is because, oh, did it tell me? Yes. At the top of a 25-foot ladder is sliding down a vertical wall at a constant rate of feet per minute. 
So it's actually sliding down the wall at a constant rate. So that means that this is three feet per minute. And then A, A changes, but this question is asking me for when A is seven feet. You see how I figured that out? And again, if we were doing this independently, our A and B could be flipped around, and that's okay as long as we answer the correction, the answer correctly in the end. So then the last leg that we have here of that triangle is DC DT. Okay. And that would be in feet per minute. Do we know what the length of C is? What is it? 25 feet. What is the rate of change of C? Does it change? The rate of change is zero. It's nice to have a zero in there every now and then because some things zero out. All right, do you understand where we got all this stuff from? Yes? Okay, so we're using A, B, and C because we got this triangle and we are going to have the Pythagorean theorem. So we're gonna write down the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And then we are going to take the derivative with respect to time. Okay. See if you can take that derivative without looking at the other side of the paper. I will make sure we all understand it if we need to talk about it again. We all agree with that? Okay, so now let's, even though we don't have to, we can actually simplify this pretty easily for ourselves before we move on. If we look here, what is DC DT? Zero. So this whole thing just zeroes out, right? It doesn't even matter what C is because that's just going to zero out, yes? And then both of these have a two in them. Could I then just divide the whole thing by two? Like without actually showing my work. I would basically factor out a 2 out of these two and then divide and then the 2 goes away and I just don't have to worry about it. You with me on that? You could use it, but again, you don't have to. So what this gives me then is A, D, A, D, T, B, D, B, D, T equals 0. Even if this didn't equal 0, I could, I could divide every single term by 2. I could still get rid of the 2s. You with me on that? We drew a triangle. Y'all been drawing triangles forever. We labeled it based on what is said, right? Wrote down these three things, because those are all things that end up over here. Simplified this a little bit. So now let's start trying to substitute some stuff in. Do you have a value for A? Yes, it is seven. Do you have a value for D, A, D? Yes, it is three. Plus, do you have a value for B? No. Do you have a value for D, B, D, T? No. So, hmm. could we get one of those values anyway? How could we get one of the values? What? Pythagorean theorem. So even though everything's changing, we know that this is always 25, right? This isn't always 7, but we're using it when it's 7. So when this side is 7 and this side is 25, couldn't we do 7 squared plus b squared equals 25 squared. Make sense? Now, you can go through and do that. That is a Pythagorean triple. It's okay if you don't know your Pythagorean triples because you, could, you should be able to make your way through this anyway, but some of you just might. So I'm just gonna tell you in the interest of time that it's 24. It's a 7, 24, 25 triangle, okay? Everybody okay with that then? All right, then let's see what is B then? 24 times db dt, and that equals zero. So let's think about all this before we start solving it. Since it is sliding down the wall, A is changing. Is A getting bigger or smaller? Smaller. Then what do we need to fix on here? 
the three. Like this is still a positive seven, but isn't this, shouldn't this be a negative three? Make sense? So that's a negative three right there because we're getting smaller, so we're decreasing. Because all it says is sliding down, but that means the length is decreasing at that rate. So now I've got negative 21 equals 24 dB dt. Not equals, oh my gosh, plus, that's what I meant to do. Um, equals zero. Then I can move that over, right? And this is gonna give me, I'm running out of room, I know, 24 dB dt equals positive 21. So dB dt, I'm going backwards. Here, I'm going to write it up at the top. So my answer then, I'm going to get dB dt equals, is it 21 over 24 or 24 over 21? 21 over 24, don't mess up something like that because that could happen. And what are my units? Yeah, dB dt, this is feet per minute. Can you... Reduce that fraction? Do you have to? So should you? No, leave it. Okay. What questions do you have? We good? Okay, we're gonna do more of these, don't worry.